Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's programming. We do have the grand finals for the Fatality League of Legends tournament about to go down. First up is TSM and Curse, Team Solo Mid and Curse coming from the quarterfinals here into the semis. And they are going to be looking to advance to those grand finals. We are going to have all of our games played at the same time tonight. We will be watching TSM and Curse. We do also have Monomatic Esports as well as... Uh, just your average Joes competing in the second semifinal bracket, and the winners of them will face the winners of this for that $5,000 first place prize. I'm the Four Card Jester. With me is Phantom Lord once again, and I do believe we have one uh, Jonathan Wendell Fatality in our chat as well. How are you guys today? Good. How's it going, man? I'm doing good too. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's a Sunday night, 7 p.m., 7.05. We're just waiting for the last of TSM to get in here and just looking forward to the matches. I'm really excited to get this, uh, you know, done and give away all these prizes because we got prizes for our fans today. We got the $5,000 first prize, the $2,000 second prize, and we're going to find out who gets them. But all four of our teams are also walking away with swag. And I got to say, Mr. Fatality, you know, that's very generous of you. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's just, um, you know, we got a really good finals coming up. We got Solo Mid versus Curse. Uh, I think it's going to be a great match. Um, I'm really looking forward to it, so I think that's what we're going to be featuring here tonight. Uh, best of three. And, you know, see how these guys come out, and uh, then we'll go on to the finals. And uh, I guess, one, you know, whoever wins this match will play against uh, Monomaniac or your just average Joes. Indeed. So we do have the teams ready to go. And I'm just going to let them know that the casting is all set. But yeah, I mean, this has been a fantastic tournament. You've been getting a lot of attention, as you can see from that view counter. 1.5 million views. You only made the account yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty impressive, man. <laughs> it's kind of cool, you know. Just uh, You know, it's something I've always wanted to do is do more streaming, and I was trying to find a way to do it. And, and uh, I think, you know, for me, you know, I played uh, professionally for a very long time and, uh, you know, moved more to the, you know, chose a new path to help, uh, you know, even when I started my company, I was already sponsoring gamers and sponsoring tournaments and so forth. But now it's more so since I'm not uh, playing in tournaments anymore, you know, my, my focus is really to help grow esports and uh, throw these tournaments and uh, help these guys out in any way. And then also give a little swag to the people that are also watching these streams and uh, being a part of... Uh, you know this new age sport that we're all so intrigued by you know when I was doing it I was running around my socks uh, in the tournament uh, areas and so forth in 1999 and uh, you know just uh, it was a lot of fun playing professionally and uh, competing and you know you know obviously winning is the best feeling in the world so uh, for a lot of these guys like Solo Mid and Curse and uh, Monomaniac and just Rapper Joes you know this if they can win this, this is a win underneath their belt and uh, it's something they can move forward with in their career as a professional gamer well, it is uh, definitely a good ter great tournament and good to see it in the League of Legends scene. The game is going to be starting, so we will say adieu for now, but I believe we're going to have a Facebook question giving away a headset and sound card combo. Is that correct? Sure, whatever whatever the we're supposed to be giving away, I'm down. <laughs> All right, then we'll do that, and we're going to take over this game. So we will talk to you after this round. It is best of three, so feel free to pop in afterwards. And we'll catch up with you in a bit, John. Thanks, man. All right. So guys, you heard it there. We have a Facebook uh, question coming at you. And if you don't know the way that all this works, you go over to facebook.com slash fatality gaming gear. I have it pasted there into the chat. You go over there. Jonathan Wendell there is going to be add putting on a question. And that question is going to be, what year did fatality go professional? So you go to the Facebook page. You answer the question. We're going to select a random winner by the end of this. Uh, round and then we're gonna do it again so if you want yourself a nice fatality headset fatality sound card you can get that random winner not a rush don't worry uh, it's not first come first serve so everyone gets an equal opportunity random generator hopefully you know you're in with the RNG gods you could walk away with a headset and sound card we gave away this yesterday we have four lucky winners almost basically creating two new computers plus new sound cards and headsets for everyone and we're gonna get this game rolling TSM versus curse game one of the best of three Phantom Lord this is your show all right I just got finished talking with the other people so uh, let's dive into the picks and bans this is gonna be a really intense game 
Um, we do have for the blue side, Curse, and on purple side we have Team Solo Mids. Looking at the Curse's bands, we have Urgot, Shivana, and Cassiopeia. Urgot is uh, a unique pick that has been done quite a bit by Chaox Bottom Lane. I've seen what uh, its its strength is just with the Janna Urgot pick. So uh, we don't see a Janna ban out there. So that Urgot ban was just to get rid of it. And yes, we will see there in the picks they will. TSM will pick up Janna. The Shivana, a typical jungle pick. Uh, very strong since the M5. Days have pumped out her popularity and Cassiopeia because um, Reginald is extremely strong with Cassiopeia. For TSM bans, they're banning out Irelia for Pro Belter top lane. Irelia, of course, uh, a really strong top laner as we see with this nerf coming up. She uh, got a little bit fine tuned and doesn't really have uh, that many hard counters, so uh, just a real difficult top laner. Of course, if she snowballs, she becomes really strong. Also, we have Kogma going out ban from TSM. Uh, so we got two bottom lane ADs coming out as a ban. That's something you don't normally see. And then to follow up with an AP mid Morgana, uh, just a typical standard uh, safe pick to farm going out from TSM. Then uh, looking at the first pick from Curse, is that a Teemo? Do we see a Teemo? Oh my goodness. Uh, I got a message here from Curse Cop <laughs> saying that Teemo is actually a placeholder for Shen. Ah, uh, okay. So we are going to have sense. a remake after this, but that is a Shen for all intents and purposes. Alright, I figured there'd be something like that because Teemo, uh, you know, Rayman's not uh, on TSM anymore and that doesn't need to be picked to snipe from him. So, uh, Shen being picked out from Curse, of course, Shen being picked and banned almost every game that I have ever seen these last few weeks. And uh, Curse is going to pick up that, so it's going to be a little bit difficult for TSM to deal with. Shen, of course, with his teleport, able to go across the map and change a fight in just a few seconds. I've also noticed that Shen players do pick up Flash. So they do have that after teleport Flash and then Taunt right away because uh, usually the player, the enemy player reacts from seeing Shen's bubble and uh, Shen just picks up that distance advantage with his Flash and Dash. Uh, so looking at the next picks for TSM, we have Ryze and Janna, of course, as I said about a little bit earlier, Janna, that pick is a really strong support pick right now, Special loves Jana, he's been playing her quite a bit, and um, we have Reginald that's going to be playing Rise. Rise, an overall strong, safe mid lane pick. Uh, also, sort of like Aurelia, not really something that can be hard countered. His hard counter is Cassiopeia, so she is banned, and uh, Reginald's going to have a pretty safe time there mid lane. To follow that, we have uh, a Tristana and Leona bottom lane. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's on AP Triss, so that is indeed going to be a Tristana Leona bottom lane to go up against the Janna MF that we see from TSM. So, a uh, pretty interesting matchup we have there. Both lanes a little bit unusual. The MF pick uh, is going against uh, Tristana and Leona, which uh, there is no real heal across the two champions, unless they both, of course, pick up heal, then MF will have that healing reduction to give. Uh, TSM that advantage, but um, should be interesting to see how those two lanes, that uh, two teams match up down bottom low. We have Udyr being picked on TSM from the odd one. Odd one, that uh, is also a pretty safe pick. He does play Udyr really well and to follow up with that, we do have Lee Sin being picked out from Curse, so Crumbs is going to be picking up the Lee, which he is a really strong as well. And then for the last pick on Curse side, we have Ziggs. So Ziggs going up against Rise mid lane. Uh, both champions have quite a bit of poke, so it should be an interesting max up. Max up, excuse me. Uh, Ziggs does do a pretty decent job against Rise, um, although if he does get the flash from Rise to do that rune prism, and uh, Odd One comes in afterwards, it might be a little bit too much damage for Ziggs to deal with. On vice versa, him having his Elise in to come in and uh, jump on to the rise to get a gank. So, uh, Curse has a little bit of a worry as far as mid lane ganks. Uh, TSM does have some better ganks. Oh, are we going to see an Udyr top and a Maokai mid or a Maokai jungle? Well, Dyrus might actually really see likes that. Udyr top, right? <laughs> this is true. Yes. Mm -hmm. And yes, indeed, we are going to see a Maokai jungle. So, Maokai and Arise mid lane. That is extremely scary 
for Ziggs, of course. Um, Ziggs does have his W to jump away, so he will have the opportunity to get out of there if he so chooses, but he has to react instantly. I know a lot of times Ziggs players do throw out their W in a little bit of a distance instead of putting it underneath them right away and then popping it so they get that distance as soon as possible. But, uh, of course, Rise with his Rune Prison and then Maokai with his W. Both of those stuns back-to-back -back are just so much CC and uh, usually that happens mid lane to gain such a easy, uh, clean gank kill. Alright, so we are having a new game come out, so we can just go ahead and leave this one. We will get the invite to that, and we're just going to get this going. But you guys know the picks, we know the bands, and you know we'll go more into analysis after uh, we get back into this, and a word from our sponsor. Motherboards are one of the most crucial uh, components uh, when you're actually building your gaming rig. Uh, it's going to be putting your processor on this, your sound card, uh, your power supply. Everything's going to be tied into this motherboard. So having the motherboard is able to take care of all of this uh, seamlessly and it makes sure it's very stable and performance is very important. But working with ASRock, the company I actually work with making my Fatality motherboards with, uh, they also understand and the craftsmanship is also very important. I want it to look good and make it people when they feel it, when they have it, they're like, wow, this is amazing. Um, then also, you know, they, they listen to what I want as a gamer. So some of the features that I want on the board, they make it a reality. So for ASRock, for me, it's a perfect fit.
Oh, what perfect timing. But all right, we got the game ready to go, guys. And there were two placeholder picks that we had to go through. Uh, the Maokai has become a Vladimir, and that Timo has now become a Shen. So that might change out a, a few things here. But that's why we got Phantom Lord here to uh, tell you exactly why. Yeah, so we're going to have that Shen uh, played by Crumbs in the jungle. Of course, Shen can also be played top lane, but they are going to do a little bit of a swap and uh, put Shen in the jungle and Lee Sin top lane. So Lee Sin most likely going to be going up against Vlad on Dyrus top lane. And then we're going to have Crumbs in the jungle on Shen versus Odd One on Udyr. And looking at bottom lane, we also have a Tristana Leona. They only have a one eight of... Uh, uh, heal between each other, but Cop is running Ignite, so he is uh, pulling up that Ignite also for Vlad and the heal uh, that Chaos is carrying. So Tristana players, because she has her jump, don't normally get flashed. They usually rely on their positioning and uh, use their jump away in case they receive any sort of gank or any kind of danger. And uh, so he's going to have a little bit of damage from the Ignite. Uh, Leona, of course, has Exhaust and Flash going up against the Jana and MF on TSM. X-Special is running Clairvoyance. We have seen him do that in the past. Uh, TSM just favoring that uh, map control that we've seen from Hanover, Germany. Um, a lot of European teams are really favoring Clairvoyance and a lot of the support players use it. So TSM now is adopting that and X-Special is going to be running Clairvoyance. So any kind of sniping, Baron or anything like that, they will indeed pick that up. Uh, Xbox was also running Exhaust to match up with Elements. And uh, we do have Keox running Flash and Heal. So for Curse's bottom lane, they are going to have a lot more aggression. Of course, uh, the Leona and Tristana is pretty deadly if they match up their combos. They can choose to wait for a 6, of course, when Leona gets her ultimate. So she'll have 3 stuns. Or they can just put it on some early aggression and really try to dominate the lane early on. Um... So we should see how that goes. And of course, lastly, mid lane, we have Reginald on Rise versus Saidoko on Ziggs. Both players, of course, running Flash and Ignite. That should be a pretty interesting uh, matchup. Let's take a look at Ziggs' runes. We are checking to see if he has any magic resistance. And yes, we do see he has a 10 magic resist uh, blues on there. So he's going to be a little bit uh, uh, more... Uh, resistant of Ryze's poke damage. Ryze, of course, has that ability to watch when uh, the when your the enemy player is going up to last hit, and then takes that opportunity to get a Q or even a Rune uh, Prism, and then fall through with some damage. So he does have ten magic resistance on uh, Ziggs, and he is running health per five on uh, his yellows. So. Uh, Ziggs will be surviving that burst there from Mal uh, from Rise. That's understandable because Rise Maokai, uh, I'm sorry, uh, um, Udir Rise is a pretty uh, dangerous mid lane. Of course, if uh, Udir runs around from the back like Odd One loves to do and gets that little snipe, he's going to just do so much damage. And uh, Reginald will be there, of course, to most likely seal the kill. But here we are. We're counting down now to 25 seconds, and the game is just about to start. So take it away, Four Card. Yeah, we will get this game rolling, ladies and gentlemen. Game number one, Curse and Team Solo Mid. Again, first place prize is going to be $5,000 cash, but the top four have already won themselves prizes. It will be first place $5,000, second place 2000 and then we got five Fatality Champion Series p uh, power supply units for third place. And then for the fourth, we do have five professional Gen 3 motherboards, all from... Fatality. So very generous of all these prizes. In total, it's about fourteen thousand dollars that uh, people are, are, you know, really competing for. And you know, best of luck to all of them. I'm very excited to get this game going. Two of the top teams of NA going head to head, while Monomatic Esports and Gesture Ravage Joes are going to be uh, going uh, pretty much parallel to this. So we will have updates for you guys after these games. And again, we do have that Facebook contest going on. You could win yourself a headset as well as a sound card because all the qualifying participants that got finals in the first and seconds they all received those same sound cards and those same headsets so a lot of stuff to go around and you know just big props to fatality holy crap right out the bat did you see that no what 
uh, I joined the game and everyone was already out the bat and it just kind of went boom like it was the billion oh. dollar man kind of thing. Na, 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 na. Yeah. Uh, but I all guess right. it was for you. I guess. Only. Lucky me. But you can see TSM already on the offense. They're going to be down here looking to maybe go to those golems while Curse is a bit more on the defense here at the Wraiths. And let's see, first items, a lot of health potions, a lot of boots, nothing really too unusual at this point. What do you think? We're going to see a little bit of a clash? Somebody going to do a double lift? Well, we saw that Curse got uh, Clairvoyance right at their red ramp, and we uh, X Special went over to his ramp and warded as we see they're on the map. So we got two wards down from both teams, or one ward from both teams, and um, Curse is going to be playing a little bit. Oh my goodness, Elements coming close, but nope, they're going to run right past. Nah, but they know this ping's going down. Yeah, so uh, they have the clairvoyance advantage, and Curse is uh, doing a good job by playing a little bit passive because they don't have uh, that vision advantage that TSM has right now. And look at TSM playing pretty strategic. They're most likely going to be stealing this bottom red. Here we go. They're Reginald leashing race for odd one. They're most likely going to be... Yep, Chaos is going down to check to see if those Dolwell Golems are going to be taken. And... Uh, they're most likely going to be taking this red here in a second. So Probelter um, is going to be doing a lot of damage on that blue. Might have to watch in the next few seconds if Crumbs does decide to go and counter jungle to take Team Solo mid's red, which uh, will of course give him that red buff to uh, then gank top, which we will most likely see. But no, instead he's going to be coming down here. And he's going to be checking out his race in red, and we'll discover that it is indeed gone. Well, yeah, but they they knew TSM was there. The pings went down. This should not be too much of a surprise that Odd One has you know come through here nice and flush. I'm very I'm a little curious as to Crumbs coming down here. Yeah, I don't know exactly why. As you did see, the ping came out from Odd One, you know, saying, "Hey, uh, special, can you clairvoyance my red?" And there we saw the clairvoyance went down. So uh, they don't really know where Crumbs is at right now. They probably uh, are thinking, "Hey, why isn't he doing red? Is he?" trying to gank somewhere early with his dash but um, no he's instead deciding to just continue on with his route that he would do normally of course there is no red there so you won't have that up um, and he did indeed give blue to Zig so Saidoko is going to be doing a lot of aggression mid lane against Reginald as you see there he does have quite a bit of uh, damage done to him already yeah those so that bouncing is, bombs man you can never yeah, underestimate the those bouncing bombs <laughs> They're just so strong because the distance of what you see for the actual spell, it does it like uh, almost a fourth additional. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's why it's a bouncing one. But you can see just so many spells coming out of Sidco with that blue buff. And as you said, I mean, Reggie's just really on this back foot. And now he's getting pushed right to his tower. And this could be, you know, a lot of CS now missed out for Reginald. But he is Rise. He has a fairly short cooldown on the Q. And he should be, you know, all right. He's one of the best you know, mids of North America, so I can't imagine that this is something that he cannot deal with. I'm very curious about this top, however, because Paul Belter and Dyrus just going head-to-head, -head, and it's a very opposite kind of situation, because Dyrus here is going pretty hard up against Lee Sin's tower. Yeah, both of those players, excellent top laners. They know that lane like the back of their hand. Pro Belter is a little bit lower HP, which is understandable, because Vlad does have his life seal, but they are about even in CS. Now take a look at mid lane. We do have Reginald at 15 CS to Ziggs 22 and of course that is a result based on Ziggs having blue with that aggression. But uh, Odd One just running through the jungle. You know he's decided not to do any early ganks. That's sort of what Udir does. He just farms up until he gets strong enough so when he does enter the lane uh, he will do a lot of destruction. He did take his own jungle red as well as uh, Crumbs is red so that red is fairly new it's not too long and i believe he's counting on doing a full clear like he's doing right now and we'll decide to get in a gank here shortly indeed now this bottom lane a lot of aggression going down on top of curse and they're uh, you know they are shoved back a little bit you can see the health potions coming out we do not have a healer on either side leona and x special of course can only really do shields but here's odd one coming in to say hello to sidco but we throw down the minefield where you are out of a blue for sidco so this should be a little bit of uh, uh 
a little bit of a reliev of pressure here for Reginald. He should be A-OK. -okay. Now, Crumbs did go back to town, picked himself up a health crystal, and pull Belter as well. Gets himself a Dorans and a Boots. So he's going to be all right. Dyrus now taking the opportunity to go on back, and he's just going to be returning. So very kind of passive. Like, we had that spot out of TSM in the early jungle, which didn't amount to anything, and now a little bit of harass in this bottom lane as, Leah, as Elements jumps on top of Chaos. But no, Chaos is just going to be okay. Long range on that misfortune. And that mid lane, we did see Reginald burn his flash, and here we go for a round two. We got that Rune Prism on Sidoko. Ah, one did flash. We do see the W down for Sidoko, and he does flash as well. Shen coming in, trying to do something. As Sidoko turns around to do some damage, Reginald's getting really low. Look how low Sidoko is. He's, is Ah, one going to get close to him? He's just going to keep throwing out mines, but Reginald most likely might get away. No, no. he's getting caught by Dash, and Crumbs does pick up the first blood. So an excellent play there by Sudoku, using his W to get away and flashing immediately after. Top lane, we do see a lot of aggression from Probelter onto Dyrus, uh, both exchanging damage between each other. Dyrus is falling a little bit lower. Uh, Dyrus is counting on uh, getting nine on Vladimir. That's when Vladimir's Q does become uh, rank five and at his lowest cooldown with, of course, no items to help with that. But um, yeah, wow, what a play right there by uh, Curse turning around, Crumbs paid attention to the map and instantly responded and came over. And uh, <laughs> literally, Sidoka had almost no HP. One more auto attack would have been his death. Now Elements is going to be you know, coming in here with his spear, but he is going to be flashing away with that shield. And that's all right. Cop down here, not exactly the best of hit points as well. So very aggressive bottom lane for Team Solo mid. And I, I just got to say, every time you say, is that how you say this uh, Curse Solo mid? Is it Sudoku? Because that's all I keep hearing. Sudoku. <laughs> that's how I say. Yeah. Uh, is there another way to say? It? Is there another uh, way to pronounce it? No idea, man. I always call him Sidko, but I, I like Sudoku because he's a very numbers kind of guy. I like that. I'd assume that you'd want something <laughs> interesting out of the name, but yeah, whatever. There's some there's some people that uh, have different names in this game, you know, trying to Not be unique to and stuff, and I. I thought that ringed a little bit better, so... Not to worry, Sudoku. I, I kind of like it. Now, we do have Curse's bottom lane heading back. The double Dorns coming out. Boots and a few more wards for Elements. And you can see the same for Team Solo mid. The triple Dorns for Misfortune. And as everyone is busy, let's see. Misfortune at 52. Tristana at 45. So a slight advantage to our AD champion for Team Solo mid. And that triple Dorns, I mean... Two on three, they both have those healing reductors. Not that really a lot of healings have been going down, but we will see. I'm just watching Dyrus up here against Pobelter. It's very interesting to watch this matchup. Yeah, we haven't had any ganks from either jungle or come top lane. Of course, uh, Crumbs didn't have his, uh, his uh, normal path that he wanted to, um, so he wasn't able to come up top and gank like he possibly would have liked to. And of course, Odd One has just been running through his jungle he does have 45 CS, so almost enough as a solo mid, and uh, he's going to be pretty strong when team fights do arise in the near future. But uh, I've been noticing throughout this game, Odd One has been pinging across the map and uh, really keeping a track of where Crumbs is positioned. So he's letting team solo mid, letting the rest of his team know where uh, that uh, Shen is at at all times, and we do see X special, of course. Clairvoyancing every now and then to catch him up. So they're really keeping track of Crumbs. He's just had a, uh, a really bad entrance to this game, but he's doing very well now. He did get first blood, so that's going to help him tremendously to uh, make up for that gold loss that he had at the start. Uh, what's Sidgu going to be doing here? Going to be trying to take out those Wraiths. Unfortunately, nothing there. Odd One already taken them out, so he's just going to come back to lane. It will be the battle of the blue buffs in the middle, but Reggie, you know, he did head on back. Not quite a catalyst, but he has the tier, and he's just going to start filling that 24 bonus mana to date. But, you know, the earlier the better for a tier of the goddess, especially on Rise. Yeah, Seiko is now winning in CS. He did instead uh, not choose to build a Doran, a second Doran Rind, and build that Sorks shoes. So he's going to be a little bit more aggressive um, in the next few minutes when he is throwing out all of his damage, trying to get as much poke off on Reginald as he can. Reginald does have his ult to give that little bit of spell vamp to heal back any kind of damage. But uh, no, we do see Sudoku just uh, uh, try. I'm sorry, Psycho. <laughs> Psycho! Oh, <laughs> Psycho! We'll just call him Psycho. Just, call, his name. just no. call him Ziggs, how's that? 
He's deciding to just clear the wave really quickly and then, uh, you know, put some aggression onto Reginald as we see here right afterwards. So, uh, it's nice that you could switch this up, although he is pushing up the lane and being dangerously far towards the enemy side of the map. So, uh, odd one, yeah, creeping around. They do, he did put a ward down there for coverage for Reginald. Pobelter is kind of down to his last few health potions, but he is burning them on a pretty consistent basis as he is doing this mono a mono with Dyrus. And literally, we've had absolutely nobody go up top to kind of do anything there. So Dyrus, of course, you know, worst top NA, as the Smurf is called. Uh, he's doing just quite <laughs> fine. 80 creep kills now to 87. So, you know, Lee Sin still a little bit ahead in that regard. Reginald 71, Ziggs 83, and you can definitely tell Reggie's a little bit under duress in this mid. So both teams playing somewhat passive, even bottom lane. Mm -hmm. We do have some poke going off every now and then casually, but uh, no real commitment. We do know that there is a Shen in the game, so Curse is sort of counting possibly on uh, having some sort of gank or initiation from one of the lanes, and then Shen pops in to change the fight completely. But I am betting my money on um, a dragon fight being contested here at the around the 15 14 minute mark so uh we might see some team fighting going on both teams just sitting back and farming up nothing really going on as you have said and uh we have the last wards going out from the support some aggression going on bottom to cop because uh, uh tsm does recognize that elements went to go ward yeah we got that, that dragon that one right there by the bush Mm -hmm. So that's good that they recognize those opportunities and a little bit of action does go down. Ooh, the double up landing on top of Curse right there. But other than that, yeah, we're about to hit 12, yeah, past 12 minutes now. No attempts at Dragon, no huge kind of counters. Everyone's really just sticking to their own. We're now past 100 creep kills for both of our ADs. Uh, well, no, I'm going to take that back. It is Lee Sin up top passing the 100 for Curse. But Zig's now passing 100. I suspect Tristana will be in that triple digit club fairly soon. So a slight gold advantage coming out in terms of the creeps for Curse. And they do have that first blood. So you can see they have about five, 600 gold to play with. And maybe our first big item here, Vladimir with uh, Will the Ancients and now an Oracles for Udir. There's really not that many wards out and about to go find just really at these dragons. So we might start seeing some of that aggression towards that dragon, which will spark something in these teams. Yeah, we're going to see Dyrus pushing top lane and then possibly coming down for when Odd One does clear these wards in the next few minutes, if nothing does happen at that point. So uh, as I said, we do have three wards from Curse around the mid area. I went now creeping into the bush. He's going to be <laughs> checking for wards, and uh, Probelt is right there to kick into the bush and let him know, hey, we see you. Now, we did have Tristana head on back. She has a best, best friend sword now, so she's going to be okay. Odd one and Reginald with Dyer is going to be you know, kind of grouping up here. They are trying to get that last ward, but <laughs> Odd one just being very persistent. Sidko did not want to give it up. He does have blue. Reginald does not takes a bomb to the face. Now, we do have the bottom lane from TSM. Not there either, and we will have Chaos just holding down mid, at least for now. A little bit of a spark going down, throwing down a ward. We know we don't have any kind of oracles coming out here. Is Pobelter going to be trying for Hadouken on top of Dyrus? No. Yes, but he missed. But that's okay. And yeah, poor Janna has to go two on one. This lane might take a good amount of tower damage. Chaos does not strut her way on over. At that little bit of time that Cop had uh, when chaos went mid lane it's gonna help him come back into lane of course they're pushing right now and I've uh, just noticed Reginald's been taking a lot of damage mm -hmm. from uh, Sidco this game from Ziggs just taking so much of that that range from his Q and it's gonna be really dangerous to see how that uh, these next few fights turn out because um, Sidco is on top of the ball with landing those skill shots of course there is some predictability that is needed to place them really well and he's just been doing a fine job in that regard. We do see uh, Regil now taking his blue which will last a little bit longer than Sidco's because he picked his up a little bit earlier and Probelter just top lane taking a few hits from the tower and casually strolling out. Tyrus of course laughing because yeah, I saw uh, that. that was a little bit funny. <laughs> 
Reginald now picks up his blue. It's cool, but you have been watching Odd One roaming around the map with that Oracle. So I'm just going to quickly look at the vision here of Curse. They only got really those two wards, one in the Dragon and one up here by the river. So good job on him clearing out a few. Trying to limit that vision, but they're not doing anything with it yet. I'm watching Pull Belter try to harass Dyrus a little bit, but that will the Ancients and, of course, the passive just... <laughs> regen that he gets from all of his various spells it's not going in his favor whatsoever now chaos is getting jumped on here by elements we got curse cop jumping in as well with the rocket jump there goes the stun from elements trying for a huge kill onto chaos but he's just so healthy oh that was an ultimate that he canceled <laughs> so nothing's yeah going on. i think he realized that uh you know the ultimate wasn't the best move which is very interesting and a, and a great play by him because that lane would have instantly pushed up he recognized oh no! So I'm just watching Reginald just go head to head against Sidgo. He did flash out of dodge the, the mid, and Odd One is just going to come in tag team and say, "Hey, go on back. I got this, buddy." And Reginald, I mean, he's just been a magnet for those bombs, man. Yeah, he's taking a lot of damage. Sorry, I missed that, but uh, wow, just Reginald. I mean, the rise is strong early game. Look at this, Crumbs is ghosting in here. He really wants this kill. Rune Prism going off. Is Crumbs gonna get? Oh my gosh, he does. But uh, Odd One flashes in. Most likely will steal the deal. But no, Crumbs pops his shield. Is he gonna get away? No, no, he's not. Y you're not gonna get away from Odd One in that regard. Wow. So that was a pretty ballsy move there by Crumbs. Well, bought a lot of time here for mid. I mean, that tower is not exactly healthy. Now Odd One has to take time out from the jungle to go babysit that lane. I saw Shen go into the bottom. I figured it was going to be a gank on the bot, but did not see him curve in. But now that's going to be 0-2 for Reginald. He, I heard that, you know, back in beta there used to be a saying that if you want to win, just make Reginald mad. And that kind of seems to be working because he's now 0-2. He's down in the creep kills. He's... 30 creeps down now in that mid lane up against Sidco. I also heard that uh, he was a little bit upset going into this game, so that might be the reasoning be behind why he's been playing a little bit poorly, taking so much poke from Sidco on Ziggs. And it looks like TSM now is going to indeed take this first dragon of the game. Dyrus is now coming down, so Fabelta recognizes that. Curse probably knows, and they're not going to contest, oh. but look at this. That was a great ultimate there from X Special, keeping Chaos alive, but we do have that exhaust. The flash coming up from Elements. Odd One abandoning the dragon to, to bring a little bit of support down here. Crumbs is now here as well, but we have now continued on the dragon's hit points. 1,500, 1,700. That steal did go down. Six in the ultimate. I saw no gold wow. there. No gold gain for Reginald. Wow. <laughs> what an awesome play there by Seiko. He's literally been the MVP of the game, just doing so well. Now has the most CS uh, in the game. No, I mean, uh, Chaos does have a little bit CS, but he is just doing so much for his team, doing a really good job, holding down Reginald so he can't make any plays, surviving ganks, and, uh, you know, just CSing like mad. And wow, that's going to be huge for Curse. TSM really needed that. Probelter now is going to take top lane because Dyrus went down to help his team. And, oh, that's just so frustrating for Team Solomid. Yeah, that... that I have to assume that that steal did go down. I saw no gold come up from TSM, and I'm just looking at the gold values here. And Leona, you know, they're about the same creep kills as Janna, and she's about 100, 150 gold ahead, which would make sense. Uh, actually, now with the turret as well, so that <laughs> really just brought the gold gain up a little bit more. So yeah, I'm gonna award that dragon to Sidco with a new fresh blue and nearly that Rabadons at 18 minutes into this game. That's that's pretty baller, man. We're going to have to see Team Solomid focus down Sidco quite a bit in this game. If they don't, he's just going to sit in the back, toss out so many spells, and uh, be able to do a lot of damage. He does have Crumbs on Shen and Probelter on Lee Sin, who are sort of bruisers that will be in the front to protect him. So the Cursus has a uh, really, stream, really strong team comp for any future team fight, but of course we can see anything happen here. Reginald is sort of counting on getting a gank onto Seiko with Odd One, but they're unable to because Seiko's just playing so intelligently, pushing the lane as fast as he can. There we see a ward being thrown down right where it was previously cleared by Odd One, and uh, the mid lane tower mm -hmm. 
finally going down. Two tower sweep right now for Curse. We do have TSM's bottom still okay. I, I hope Elements is still here because he's been sitting in that bush for a while. I kind of thought he was going to initiate onto Chaos, but so far all their initiation on top of their AD player has not really come to any kind of fruition. It's, they've been much more successful ganking Reginald, and they're up 2-1 two two because of it. Both kills are going to be on him. And at this point, you know, about 2,000 gold. We do got the shield going off on Elements. I don't know why, but okay. And a frozen mount coming out for Shen, so he must be doing pretty good for himself just by getting that early counter jungled. And uh, both towers, mid and top down for TSM. This is just going to allow Pro Belter and uh, Sidco to roam around and do whatever they want. Sidco does recognize that uh, throwing down some spells there for that red buff, seeing that the Icon is still present, but it is not there when he throws down the spell, so he knows that Odd One is there, and Pro Belter might get ganked here. We do see Odd One creeping up and around, but, um, you know, Pro Belter on Lee Sin, he's just going to jump to his minion wave when it comes up. He knows what he's doing, he knows what he's capable of, and uh, I think we're going to see some passive farming until the next dragon here. We yeah. might see a group up by Crumbs onto bottom lane to try and push down that final tower, which uh, is about half HP, but, um, you know, Team Solomon can't really make a play here because Dyrus, you know, he can't dive onto Pro Belter. He can't, Original can't dive onto Sidco because Crumbs is just going to alt in and change up the fight in a matter of seconds. So they know this, they're aware of this, and I believe they are betting on Endgame for having any sort of advantage, possibly over fighting for Baron. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Ziggs with a death cap 21 minutes into the game. Excellent work on his part. I do see Shen picking himself up an oracles to counter the odd ones oracle and we have been you know going around destroying a lot of wards with that oracles on our udir so now uh, we're eventually gonna get a little bit of revenge here from crumbs and we're just gonna start seeing all these basically these christmas lights on the map just popping out because we are gonna be losing all those vision pockets and yeah it does look like it is gonna be a farming kinda game it's five thousand dollars on the line right you gotta win this best of three to get into there and you know at least you're guaranteed two thousand dollars whoever wins the best of three series I'm looking at elements taking a lot of damage but it's, it's gonna be alright if he was gangplank he would have eaten an orange but Unfortunately, it's just Leona, and she has a giant shield, and she's so hard to just take down. Kind of like this Chaos. Every time they jump on Chaos, just nothing happens. Now, we do got Odd One down here. I don't think Elements knows about it. He definitely doesn't know about it. Oh, did we reveal? We might have revealed. I see no ping going down, so maybe, maybe not. But Elements is now <laughs> really staying in the back. Yeah, I think they know that he's there. That could be a very big wasted opportunity. I don't think they know he's there. Um... Don't forget, Curse does have Shen alt, and uh, <laughs> Shen is showing up bottom lane. There's the dash onto Chaos, the alt from Leona, the jump from Cop onto Chaos. It's the full focus on him right now. Is he going to fall? Does have an ignite hit. There's the last hit from Shen, and Chaos does fall down. There's the Ziggle coming oh in, and oh my goodness, Janna does fall down. But here is Reginald to come back and do a lot of damage. He is focusing onto Cop, but it isn't enough because Sidco does show up to even the odds, and they are most likely going to take this tower. Curse so strong, man. I'm looking at Dyrus getting bullied as well. Paul Belcher really trying to chase him down. He has a lot of hit points at this point to spare, and <laughs> wow, Reginald actually picking up this revenge kill on top of Shen. Odd One is still here as well, but he is about to drop. Thank you to the Curse Cop coming in with that rocket jump, and on what d d was going to turn into a 2 for 0 turns into a 3 for 1, and Paul Belcher chasing Dyrus out of lane. This tower is very likely going to be dropping down as well. And right now, it's just looking like a very strong, collected and focused curse team just having fun in this game. Yeah, they did have that disadvantage at the start with Shen's jungle getting invaded, but they've really uh, mustered up the strength as a team and have done so well in each and every lane. Uh, we did see a play there by Reggie on trying uh, that got a kill but Alwyn did fall and so did his oracle so that's going to be really bad for uh, uh, Team Solomon I believe Shen on uh, Crumbs did also fall so they yep. both junglers lost their oracles and we see Team, Sol Team Solomon instantly responding 
to the whole fight by taking Dragon, and they are indeed going to pick this up for their team. Well, that'll equalize the Dragon counts, and Crumbs did pick up another Oracles as soon as he came out. I was kind of curious what Lee Sin was going to make his Giant Spelt into, but it looks like we are going to be rocking a double Frozen Mallet on this team. I was kind of hoping it would be that Warmox for the tankiness factor, but hey, we still got that Atmos coming. We have a Frozen Mallet on two of our characters now on Curse, and you know, they, ha they both have those big gap closers. Of course, Shen can be anywhere on the map to defend his allies. I can't help but think that running away will not be an option in some of these future fights for TSM. Yeah, but we're going to have so much CS between all of the members of either team, so a lot of them are building these heavy items um, at the 25 to 30 minute mark, so these team fights. So we oh. see a Zigzal coming out on the blue. That was a completely blind Zigzal. They yep. knew that uh, Team Solomid was over there, but it wasn't close enough. If he would have waited another second, he might have had the opportunity to steal it. I am all too familiar oh, with oh. Ziggs ult stealing. Check this out. Baron. I see it. We got I see it. <laughs> we got the two of them on Baron while the rest of the team in the mid, keeping the other team at bay. And, you know, this early in the game, 25 minutes, uh, you, you wouldn't think that these guys could do it, but they're, they're trying to make the best of it as, right now. Does the other team have any idea? We have that Oracles on Crumbs, and there's been no wards here whatsoever. There's no pings going down. Chaos is still in the bottom lane, and this Baron's going down extremely slowly. <laughs> and I love how Curse is putting Sidco mid lane. He's just throwing out so much damage here onto Reggie, and uh, sort of distracting Team Solomid from any idea where the is the top two laners. But our one is coming, and he does put a ward down, so he does see, and we are going to see Team Solomid instantly react. Sidco does a great job by landing down. Oh my goodness, look yeah, at that damage. I saw but it. Here's the ultimate from Dyrus. We got an exhaust coming out as well. He goes to pull right through the satchel charge. Here comes Janna. The Chen ult is going to be enough. Well, he's going to be there, but great Zonius from Dyrus negates all that damage, and Sidco will drop to Chaos. Good focusing right there. Crumb's not looking so healthy either, and that is going to be the second Oracles that Curse now loses. So taking down that Baron, or at least attempting to take down the Baron, definitely did not turn into their favor. Only being able to go three on five, and then as soon as Odd One threw down that ward, TSM just kind of zerged right on over to it. But very gutsy move from Curtis trying to take that early Baron. It looks like uh, Solomid might try to take a page out of their book. Yeah, it was a great play, but I think that they did a poor job afterwards. They didn't really know what to do after reacting. We just see Reginald flashing onto elements and he gets bursted down. Odwin now following onto a Probelter. Cop does jump away and oh. does a beautiful ult to, to push Odwin over the wall. We see that T-Solid is still on Baron. Dyrus did stay with Reggie and they are going to pick up the Baron for their team. And that's going to equalize the kills. A very offensive flash from Reginald, but it secures the kill even if the other two did get away. That was quite the, the awesome Dragon Kick throwing Odd One over the trees. But 5-5 five, five, and that's going to equalize the gold, which means we have ourselves a dead even game here at 27 and 50 into the match. I ready to see both ADs from either team at about the same CS, same kills. And uh, we do see that Chaos did have a Bloodthirster pretty early on. He noticed that the game was not really racing it into anything too interesting. So he recognized that he had the time to farm those minions. Uh, that Bloodthirster did level up. And I, I can't actually check to see. Can I? No, it doesn't show me how many stacks the Bloodthirster has, but most likely he does have a Guardian Angel now, so he, the Chaos is just going to be doing so much damage. We're going to see a lot of output from both ADs here in the next team fight. And Team Solomid is going to group up together, instantly react, and take down this tower. Reginald pushing the little aggression, trying to get something onto Seiko. Elements does get caught. There's the Janna ult, and Elements just drops immediately insta uh, really out of <laughs> out of position there here's a quick tip for you though dude just highlight over the bloodthirster after you select the hero and you can see that she has herself 40 damage 10 percent life steal it's a fully stacked bloodthirster and it uh, is fully stacked yep and now you learn something today and knowledge is power all that star swipe and dyrus up top just forcing crumbs away so we got the tower after the baron another kill onto elements that will put tsm now in the kill lead up about 2000 we got a ping coming up top because there is a lone defender called shen who might be going home in a body bag at this point the clairvoyance going down excellent tornado and dyrus will pick up the kill 
And now they're just going to turn right back around, pick up a tower, and oh, uh, Curse is going to try to fight it. Ultimate from Dyrus going down, catches Pole Belter. But it's not going to be enough. Throwing down all that damage is Sidco. Well, it would be if he could land it on anyone. It just went right through everyone. And right now, TSM really taking control of this map. They've equalized the towers. They're now ahead in kills and gold and the Baron. It's, uh, it's looking good for them. Looks like they're coming back very nicely. Yeah, this is all Team Solomon needed was some sort of little break to be able to uh, recognize what advantage they have. And they really are a strong team, uh, knowing their capabilities. And we, as we've seen here with their Baron buff, they've moved through, taken two towers, got a few kills with it as well. And they're going to be taking the rest of the objectives on the map. And uh, instead of being able to, uh, you know, be passive from that aggression that Curse was being uh, was providing at the start, they're now going to be able to contest every sort of little obstacle and um, objective on the map. This dragon should be popping uh, any second now. It's 30 minutes in. The first one was around uh, 18, I believe, and then the second one was around 24, 25, and there it is. Bam! That's what Chaos was timing out. That's why he was here. It made sense. And there's absolutely no ward coverage whatsoever. So that's going to be, I believe, the second dragon now for TSM. One to curse, two to them. And the gold the gold values are just keep going at this point. Dyrus laughing a little bit at this bottom tower. And you do see a lot of TSM down here. Odd one's going to come in, but he gets ulted by Cop. Just, you can see him just go all the way back from where he ran. But this will be a tower. Odd one can tank this, no problem. Aegis, as well as a heart. It's cool. Now, Pobelter up top is going to be trying to do a little bit of counter pressure, but Reginald will be there to answer it, throwing out Z Deeps, throwing out the ultimate as well. And that will put us now up a tower. And now everything is up. TSM is just ahead in every regard now. I think we might see some split pushing strategy from Curse here. Uh, they are recognizing they might be a little bit too weak in a full on team fight between both sides. So. Uh, they do have Shen, of course he has his ultimate, he's really the only one in the game that has that teleporting ability and um, you know they might be able to make some sort of opportunity with that. Team Solomid though, a very experienced team, they will know how to react to that. Now, of course a lot of the members on their team, Tyrus, a 320 CS with the Zonians, with the Death Cap, with the Will the Ancients. Just going to be able to do so much damage in a team fight unless he's focused and burst down. All the members of Team Solomid are really strong. Dyrus has himself the Rabadons now to go with the Zonias. I did see a Frozen Heart earlier on Reginald and now cre <laughs> creating himself that Banshees. And oh. a Giant Spout. Oh, Madeir. Did especially get jumped upon. He got caught trying to clear a ward over at Baron. We did see uh, Crumbs and uh, uh, Probelter catching that. They really... Uh, we're aware that that was going to be warded, and it sort of baited X Special with that ward, and he fell down <laughs> because work. of that. So they might create an opportunity here. They're going to check Dragon. Yeah, it is down. <laughs> they should be aware of that. Of course, they haven't had map control for the last few minutes. There's, so Well, uh, there's no wards. Like, there's this one ward that just went down, and that's it. That's the only ward in the game. <laughs> mm -hmm. So many oracles. Like, we're on our third oracles for Shen just alone. And we'll see if Elements will get an Oracle here soon. We don't have any ward coverage over Team Solomid for the Baron area. And uh, it is not up. It won't be up for a few minutes, I believe. Should uh, be about two or minutes. Yeah, two or two minutes or so. Mm -hmm. So uh, they don't really have any worry about that at the moment. But uh, um, we might see some of them grouping up and actually pushing a tower. They are really strong as far as a full-on team fight comp. So... Uh, but I think they might play it safe. They know they're in the lead. They're going to go back and forth and farm. Uh, I'm just very worried for uh, uh, Curse as far as Dyrus on Vlad. Vlad endgame was full 6-6 six, six items. It's just it's destructive. It just can sustain so hard in a team fight and uh, be able to put out so much damage unless he's bursted down in focus. Of course, uh, Curse does have uh, two ignites, I believe. Yes, they do have three ignites. I'm sorry. Four uh, to lock down Dyrus on his uh, spell vamp, so he can't really sustain as much as he'd like to. But if they don't focus down all their damage onto either Chaos or Dyrus, either person is going to be putting out so much damage. Uh, I believe they won't focus Chaos right off the bat because he's just going to be sitting in the back, and uh, with his Guardian Angels, he won't really matter. 
uh, worry too much as far as getting bursted down because he'll come right back up and able to put out so much more damage. I find it interesting, Xpecial's rocking the oracles now, but there we go. Baron's now up. We're throwing down all the wards. Unfortunately, we were not able to find the one there by <laughs> Curse, and Crumbs is just like, oh, ward. Nope, there's a whole team there, and he's just going to get on back. Reginald throwing him a little bit of a love tap. Now, we do have a, a few extra items now purchased, so this fight will probably be a very decisive one. And you can just see the harass coming out from Curse just over the ledge. And um, yeah, Expecial learned his lesson. He's staying in the back this time. He does not want to get insta -gibbed. And you can see the Curse just slowly moving forward. Those minefields, bombs, and <laughs> Hadokens really just uh, forcing him back. Crumb's going to come into here. That's a little bit of a risky. And Element's looking for that kill on top of Reginald. We're just keep throwing out all this poke. Odd one not, not carrying in turtle stance. He's going to go in. Sidco gets insta -gibbed. <laughs> from just everything, especially actually picking out that kill. There's the Jana ultimate resetting everything as Elements does drop. Crumbs is going to be able to pick up the kill on top of an odd one, but I'm not too sure Jana will be able to get him. But Chaos will for sure. Dyra's still alive. Reginald's still alive, taking out that Tristana. And this is a very possible ace if we can catch Pull Belter. Do we got a strut going? I do think we do got a strut going, and Pull Belter will not be <laughs> able to outrun this. And Chaos not even dying. He has a Guardian Angel, didn't need it. He's a boss like that. That was a great job there by TSM, recognizing that Seiko was running up a little bit too, uh, too far to throw down his his mines and his bombs to try and get some poke damage on. Reginald did flash and get the rune prism, and we uh, saw Dyrus instantly res respond by getting an ultimate. He just got blown up. Seiko could not do anything at all. Doesn't have a Zonia's. Is going to be building a Deathfire Grass, but... You know, he's just straight damage, so if he doesn't have his positioning to help him out, um, he will, of course, have that situation occur over and over if he gets out of position. Now we do got this creep wave in this bottom, pushing the curse bottom turret. It's going to take a little bit of damage. It'll be okay. Crumbs is now here, but Chaos now, as soon as he killed Pobelter, he did not go back to help finish up that Baron. He just pushed down this mid turret so that is going to put us up five to three for turrets and about eight thousand gold uh, odd one could probably just go solo this dragon because it is here and we got uh, about what three minutes yeah a little over three minutes left on the baron buff so tsm is going to have to do something with it but that was a five for one i mean tsm really did recognize the excellent advantage they had there and they capitalized on it fair and square and it's really boosted their confidence throughout the rest of the game from that uh, one opportunity earlier where they did you know, take that advantage. So uh, now that they're leading in gold and items and uh, every single member of Team Solomid is strong, of course Chaos is arguably the strongest, just has so much damage. Of course Dyrus also has a lot of damage. He did finally get that Riley's Crystal Scepter so he's going to be able to sustain himself in a team fight as well as slow his opponent for whoever he is targeting, which will most likely be Sitko. So Sitko, not really in the best position. He needs to sit back and be as far away uh, from TSM as possible, but he'll be able to do as, as much damage as he can. When you when you sort of build what uh, 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 Sitko is going, where you just go straight damage, of course, you know, you usually get the Sork Trues, the Rabadon, Seth Cap, Void Staff, Death Firegrass, all of those items are straight damage. So it's like a glass cannon build. Uh, you have to make sure that your positioning makes up for the lack of defensive items. And of course, we saw there that last team fight, he was out of position and they lost a lot of kills and that objective as well. All right, so TSM putting up some big pressure here. Reginald going maybe a little bit 2D, but a big damage coming down onto Bill Belcher. Reginald will be the target with that frozen heart doing some great work. Ziggs running out the ultimate. Chaos picking up the kill. Ziggs now just has to run for his life as Reginald's going to be picking up the second as Leona drops and now Lee Sin. And this is going to be a five for zero. Mm -hmm. GG well played coming out. And wow, just... TSM, a little bit of a rocky start, but they're able to take two very convincing team fights, two barons, and just win the game. Easy as that. That's all you gotta do, right? Mm hmm, indeed. I really like how Dyrus built that Zonia's a few times yeah. in those team fights. He kind of baited, getting really low health, and uh, you know, he might have pulled at the start to get that slow. And there we see at, at the last little bit there when Cop and Dyrus were going 1v1, he uh, Zonia'd after he pulled 
and uh, sort of baited Cop to turning around and doing damage when he couldn't, and the rest of Team Solomon followed up and got the kill. But yeah, excellent game there by Team Solomon coming from a, uh, a... They had an advantage at the start, you know, counter jungle and crumbs, and then we're sort of losing in the lane. Probelter, uh, Sidco, uh, we're doing really good job in their lanes. Bottom lane was sort of just a farm fest. Uh, they lost those dragons, and then finally they made an opportunity for themselves and snowballed off of it. So great job there. Curse, of course, did really well in the laning phase. So um, just a great job by both teams. So GG well played. Game number one of the best of three in the semifinal series for the Fatality $5,000 League of Legends tournament now done. We're going to take a quick break at this next game set up. Fanlord and I will be returning, and we're also going to be announcing the winner of the headset sound card combo on the Facebook contest, and we're going to set up another one so that you guys can uh, have another chance at that fantastic prize. So stay tuned. We're not going anywhere, guys. Quick word from our sponsor, some music, and then we're going to get game number two rolling for you.